a huge compliment to you, Jared. You remind me so much of your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to NEMT Experts. I've got, as always, a special guest with me this time, but also the son of another special guest. I've got with me Jared Hilliard, who is the son of Rosalind Taggart, who watchers of the podcast may know um, I did an episode with Rosalind where I actually rode along with her in her vehicle. Um, so this is NEMT Experts podcast episode number 18. Um, Rosalind has been a longtime customer of Bambi, uh, a star customer. We hung out at the NEMTAC conference and she's here in Northern California where I live. So I got to do this ride along with her. Um, Rosalind, good friend, mother of Jared, who I've got with me today. And interestingly, Rosalind asked me to set up this interview with Jared to get <laughs> Jared's take on B811 medical transportation and uh, things in general. So I'm excited to do this one. Uh, <laughs> Long intro, but Jared, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me and um, letting me be a part of it. Yeah, I know. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for being on. By the I way, I'm loving the swag. So for everyone watching, that is the logo uh, of B811 Medical hat. Transportation. Yeah. Little the shirt hat and the shirt <laughs> representing uh, our work attire. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> work, so I'm always I always have one of um. Uh, B11 hat. I have a, a white one, a black one. I have a, a camouflage one. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, Jared. Uh, anyone who's seeing this knows that I'm always wearing this shirt. I won't say how many of these I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, Jared, I'm going to start off with easy questions, and then I'm going to get into the fun, spicy stuff in a bit. Um, but just to give everyone an overview of you, can you tell me a bit about your background? Um, you know, when you started working with your mom's medical transportation business, B811, and um, just overall how it's been? Um, I can. I guess I can just dive deep into the background. I mean, I'm. Uh, I grew up in Vallejo. Uh, I graduated um, at Rod Rodriguez High School in um, 2011. Uh, from there, I, uh, I went on to I went to City Co College for a while. I worked and um, was trying to get on the football team, but I ended up going to a, a junior college called College of the Siskiyous up north. Uh, it's a little city called Weed, California. Uh, they had like dorms and stuff, so I was looking for me and my mom were looking for junior colleges that had dorms that I can live in. And I was uh, playing football, so I played. Uh, I think I redshirted my yeah I redshirted my first year. My second year, I was diagnosed with a, a heart murmur, enlarged heart, so I couldn't play anymore. So uh, I moved back home and just trying to figure out life. I was majoring in kinesiology, but uh, I had stopped going to school after I um, stopped playing because, I mean, my main purpose was for football at that time. So I, after I had I stopped playing, I didn't go to school anymore. So just figuring out life, having a, I have a nine-year-old daughter. She just turned nine Sunday, matter of fact. Uh, we had a party here. Uh, then I have a three-year-old daughter also. So I would say between what ages of 23, between now when I'm 30, just figuring out life and trying to get everything together and just going, you know, how, how it is, just trying to figure it out as you grow as a young adult. Um, and my mom came, my mom had been telling me about the idea of B811. I think it was like 2019. She was telling me about this idea she had, and then I forget what year. It was when our my uh, uh my uncle Kevin he was um diagnosed with a I think like a certain bone disease or something. So he was uh, in a wheelchair. He was an electric wheelchair. He couldn't move or nothing anymore. He was a person that can do everything on his own, drive. But at this point, he couldn't do anything on his own no more. So I think that motivated her and came up with the idea to help get him transported around because he needed transportation because he used to be an independent person. So I think that's where the idea had came from. Um, it was her and my her and my sister actually came up with the name. Uh, and then was and then she actually went all the way in with it. Well, we've been in business for about a year and a half, almost two years. 
I had a, it was funny because I had just lost my job right before it had started. So it was kind of like perfect. She had just started the business and needed help with it. And I had just lost my job and needed a job. So why not go help my mom and work with her? And then it just got turned into her teaching me the business and having me go to certain meetings. And like I said, having her, having me meet you when we first started off with you and just showing me like little insight, like for the business now, I'm the operations manager. So I do like the invoices, the scheduling, uh, uh, interview different drivers, um, make sure it's gas in the car, the oil change and stuff is up to date. The tires are all good. Uh, and then, yeah. And then I guess it's been going on for, I said, almost two years. And I just been, just me and my mom been at it, just hustling and, we both kind of dove into it with no experience or no, no knowledge, just trying to f just been figuring out as we go. So it's been a a, a nice little roller coaster, but I find that I, uh, I see it paying off. I see it paying off for you guys. So Jared, you guys started, like you mentioned, almost two years ago. And I remember <laughs> it wasn't long after you guys started that you came on to Bambi. And you guys have just started with one or two vehicles at the time. Mm -hmm. Over the past one and a half years, I mean, I've seen your business skyrocket. Right now, you guys are approaching five vehicles in the span of just like, you know, almost a year going from one to five vehicles. You guys are growing really fast. Um, and like you mentioned, Jared, you do everything for the business. I mean, mm -hmm. I know, you know, talking with your mom, you started out driving a vehicle and doing trips. You do operations, dispatching, scheduling, billing, everything. Um, what do you focus on right now for the business? Uh, my main focus, I'm still driving. Uh, of course, I'm not driving as, as much as I used to. If you used to see me on the schedule when we first started off, when we first got with you, it was just me on there. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not driving as much. Uh, right now, her main focus is just to get me to kind of take over the business so she can act she's she's into the coffee shop a lot so she wants me to take over the business and look to expand that as we expand b811 so and i see her working and my mom goes to sleep working or writing stuff down or so it's something for sure that motivates me to want to take over and really basically just take her spot as far as be at 11 and be able to run it how she runs it um i take in the phone calls as far as like the uh, i do the scheduling for our drivers and then we do the scheduling for our clients that we pick up so that's we get in the, we have a phone um and the number and the number that they call that literally rings all day we get text messages all day so we don't even we don't have a um um i guess a call center yet so it's me and my mom working the phone and some days she may have it some days i may have it and we're doing the scheduling like that so for everyone context you know you guys run not only b811 medical transportation but your mom rawls and tiger she also started this coffee shop recently which y'all run too so two businesses at the same time i mean i know this because I'm on the phone with your mom from time to time, but she is one of the hardest working people I know. She works at any time of night, day and night. Um, I'm sure that's had an, uh, a pretty big influence on you. So yeah. let, let me ask you um, a question which might be spicy. Take it in whichever way you want. Um, just hopefully you can be honest about this. How is it to have your mom as your boss? Um, it's cool. She, like, we know each other very well, so of course we didn't, we, we butt heads or, or, um, I wouldn't say get into it, but like, I guess we, yeah, of course we butt heads as far as that's going to happen. And if you working with someone every day and trying to figure it out and, you know, you ha might have a down, a down day or something or, but for the most part, it's, it's been good. Like, why? I wouldn't want to work for nobody else or build nobody else's business up but ours. So it'd be like the the bad the the good outweigh the good outweighs the bad for sure. Cause it's like why how I look at it is why not work with my mom and and build a I have kids, like I said, build a legacy and watch her step by step. I go 
I'm not, I can't go work for someone else and go sit with the boss and they show me step by step how to run a business. So why I, that's that's whenever we do butt head, that's what I resort back to. I should I would say, like I wouldn't want to work with at the end of the day, I wouldn't want to work with nobody but my mom and build this up. And I mean, she doesn't really come at me like she's my boss either. So that's why it's kind of it's kind of easy. Like we kind of I wouldn't, of course, not equal, but she doesn't come at me like her boss. Like I said she looks at me as far as being her her co part as far as running met uh the b811 company so it's been yeah. it's been cool of course it has its rocky moments but for the most part <laughs> <laughs> well i love that i mean knowing your mom like she's an incredible role model to have as someone to work for and work with so oh yeah definitely definitely like i've been seeing her working since i didn't grew up with i didn't grew up what she would say i grew up what she was but but twenty when she had me, so we basically didn't watch each other grow up as adults and try to figure it out together. So it's definitely a blessing to have a uh, have a mother like her, for sure. And I mean, you guys, even your sister works with B eight eleven Medical Transportation. You guys really are a family run business. Yeah, um, Jared, I want to get your perspective. You guys have been doing B eight eleven Medical Transport for almost two years now. Um, what are some of the biggest lessons that you have personally learned over the past two years of running this NEMT business? Um, I would say, I, I, I can say less, I'll start off with saying lessons as far as the transportation business directly. Like I'm, at, at, in the beginning, I was learning something new every day. I um I went through the training as far as um how you strap them in correctly and using the different the cue strings and how you strap them in the different vans when you have the extra seat belt so um how you put them in a van the correct way to put them in a van um so I would say it's as far as um that like I I could say I learned something every day. I said we just like how Bambi keeps us updated as far as um like we have invoicing on, on Bambi now. That's something new that I just learned uh well what was that about? A, a week ago she showed me how to do the invoicing on Bambi. Um so it's, I would say I I'm learning something new every day as far as the business. Um she's showing me how to how to um apply for these different contracts and get contracts with, with different companies and stuff. So it's something I said it's, it's something new at least once a, at least once a week. It's definitely something new with the business that I'm learning, and that's what I kind of like about it. Besides the fact, like I'm of course, if I'm working, I'm just driving every day. But as far as when I'm in the office, it's definitely something new. I would say at least once a week. Um, you know, there was a, a funny thing that your mom shared with me yesterday. <laughs> I think she was mentioning that you found some sort of news story about a mother and son duo running a medical transportation business in Solano County. And you were telling your mom, oh, wow, look at this couple. They're doing it really well. And like, <laughs> we should try to do what they're doing. Um, and then your mom told you, Jared, they're talking about us. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, I just, you know, she, she's more, dealing with everything direct in the emails and all the emails and stuff she gets as far as a company and people talking about it and seeing newsletter. And I don't, I didn't know that we were being talked about that much. Like, I guess we get talked about a lot as far as in Solano County. And, um, yeah, that's, that's dope to hear. Like who, who wouldn't want to hear that? Like doing, doing it with, with your mom. Like, yeah, that's definitely, that definitely, uh, when you resort, like you said, when you talk to button heads and um, and if we uh, if we work good together, when that type, when you hear that type of stuff, like it doesn't make you want to do nothing but go like harder for it or or um, or work harder because you know it's paying off. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, Jared. So you started working with B eight eleven. I mean, when you guys started the business two years ago, when you were twenty eight years old, um, I'm assuming that before that you had not done any medical transportation work before, mm. right? No. Nope. What do you think of 
the medical transportation industry and like doing NEMT work? Like, how does it compare to what you've done previously? And like, is this something that you feel like you can sustainably keep doing for the foreseeable future? Um, as far as the career and what I used to do, this is a walk in the park. I used to do, I used to be, a, I used to, I then worked in like warehouses and stuff. And then I had went to, um, um, I was in an iron worker union for about two, three years, right before, um, the pandemic had hit when, uh, well, actually I had broke my finger before the pandemic hit. So I was out of work crack long. And then when it had hit, it wasn't really no work. And then, um, that's when I was I was working for um uh, what did they call it? It's like another basically construction company, but it's compared to the job I used to work. It's a walk in the park. I'm just picking up clients and dropping them off to where they need to go. I'm not sweating. I ain't, I'm I said that's one thing I can say. Like I can't complain as far as that. And then the clients, like my mama, tell you about that. Uh, I have pretty close relationship with like I know all our clients by name. I know how to get majority of, of my clients' house and where they wherever they're going by heart. I don't even I just need Bambi just to check it in. I don't even need the maps because I've been doing it for so long. And as far as like our, our clients that have been with us from from day one or even the ones that build up after a while, I just gain that relationship with them because it's just I try to treat them or even when I interview people, I try to tell them like you want to treat them. Like they're your grandparents. You're like, how would you want somebody to treat your mom when you're transporting them? Or how would you want somebody to treat your dad or grandpa when you're transporting? So I just try to just hold a small comment, even if they don't talk a lot. A small hi, hello, how your day been? It actually means a lot to them because they've been they've been sitting in the house all day or all week and only left for this one day for this appointment. So as far as um that is just the relationships with them is kind of fun like i have a few of them now i'm close with and they always look forward to seeing me or they'll call and check on me or like for christmas i got a couple of different like little gift cards and stuff from uh from some clients last year um so yeah definitely um as far as what i used to do was a walk in the park and then like i said i also like just the relationships and um making them happy actually and seeing them, you know, put a smile on their face. Or if I'm talking to a guy that's watched sports, we can sit there and talk about sports or anything. So, yes, um, I like it. I can see myself as far, especially once the driving part is, is done. Yeah, I can definitely sit in the office and do scheduling and invoicing and look uh <laughs> different contracts. <laughs> that's, uh, that's goal. But the next goal is to do – um. Uh, uh, Gurney. That's the next goal of the business. Yeah, Gurney. The ultimate goal. My mom wants to do. Uh, she wants to do heli get the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jared. If I were talking with someone else, I would ask if they were joking. But talking with you <laughs> and knowing your mom, it's not a joke. You guys yeah. actually want to do a helicopter medical transport. I'd believe it. I will say probably hopefully hopefully by next summer we'll we'll we'll, we'll be gurney be having a gurney transportation. <laughs> well, we've got that already built into Bambi, but the helicopter <laughs> transport is a feature that we'll just have to add in for you guys. Yeah, we're gonna be right <laughs> Bambi. We're gonna be taking it, taking you guys along with us. Fly, Bambi, fly. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I definitely love Bambi. Bambi has been. From what we started off with, how we were scheduling and try to find how to get around, it was just like a text, a text, and an ad, sending a text and an address and a name and stuff. Bambi is so, and then like I said, now that we have the, um, the, the even the invoicing on Bambi is way easier than what we were just doing. Like Bambi has been definitely a key to um, to uh, be at eleven. From uh, the updates, I I stay um, seeing the updates. How you guys have it? Um, I think probably been this week or last week you can do it where you can undo it if you press start the trip too fast or uh i think you, you, when you start trip or you're transporting you can now undo it if you didn't mean to do it or say if you're there and they're not ready you can undo it it's a little it's always you guys are definitely always updating and, and staying and staying uh, up to date with the app so i definitely love Bam bambi is <laughs> that's my go-to <laughs> Yeah, your mom tells me that you're a big fan of us and you're always yeah. looking out for the new additions. Yeah, they got the, the GPS. We can um we can track our drivers through Bambi. 
So yeah, that yeah. definitely been a major help with us as far as keeping us organized. And like I said, especially the invoicing was was big. That was like that was big. The invoice being on there now that was definitely big for us too. Because that's like I said it's way more uh, easier and simpler on there, and. It's, we always on Bambi, so why not do invoice on Bambi? <laughs> yeah. Keep going, man. You're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You opened me up a little bit. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with you. I'm usually shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, your mom was telling me that all of your clients, like, they always ask for you. Like, if, <laughs> if it's because you used to do more driving for the business um, yeah. now you're doing more of the admin side of things and so so people will ask like oh how come jared didn't come to pick me up where's jared <laughs> like literally to the point like I, as we're hiring more drivers i go introduce the driver to like my my clients that normally want me to pick them up i go with him the first day and introduce them or i'll give them a call like hey we have a new driver pick you up today you don't be alarm because i knock on their door. well usually most of the time their door is unlocked so they're just yeah jerry come in so i just walk in their house and help them out or whatever they need um or if they're um that's if they're door through door then we have the door to door <laughs> but just it's just all about making them comfortable and having that communication with them that's the main key like if we're running late all it takes is a phone call rather than just sitting either if they don't have some i know sometimes they may not have phones you can call David or call wherever appointment that they're at and let them know, hey, I'm running behind or, hey, I'm not getting them. Can you let them know that this driver's getting them? So communication with them is definitely a key. And I guess that's, I don't know, I just, like I said, I look at them, of course, I always respect my elders and I just look at them, like I said, I'm transporting my my mom, my dad, or my grand grandpa or, grand, or uh, grandmother. So like I said, it's nothing but a small, small conversation. The hi, hello, how you doing? Even if that's it, if they don't want to talk, that's fine. But just just being respectful, because I we get it all the time that that they have like bad experience and they tell us like little stories and stuff. So it definitely be like the small stuff that matters to them. This is a huge compliment to you, Jared. You remind me so much of your mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got like a chill, low key personality. And yet when it comes to business, you're on point, hardworking, <laughs> ambitious, and you always prioritize your clients and making sure that the people getting transported have the best experience. Tell me this, Jared, like, you know, your mom, she is just executing on a vision of like starting this medical transport business, starting the coffee shop, making it happen, growing the business. I can get the same in you. Now you're on the admin side of B811. You're thinking about getting new contracts for the business, growing the business. Where do you see the company really growing in the next one to three years? Like you're at five vehicles now. You've got some contracts with private pay facilities in your area, in Solana County here in Northern California. You work with a few local brokers. Um, where do you see the business going and, and where you're driving the business? Um, in the next one to three years, um, I definitely see us. I want to expand to a different uh, um, state so I can go run the state and and, and move because I I want to move from California or just go experience living in a different state. Um, but I definitely see us doing that. Or um, I know for sure just in in, in Northern California, I can definitely see seeing us being major around here like as far as solano county i would say like we have solano county um well, we have contra uh you also have these are other um counties that we're trying to do a uh, contra costa county um what's the other county but like as far as like northern california for sure the next three years i know we can expand around here for sure but my ultimate goal would be in the next one to three years is to expand to a different state somewhere. Okay. And do you think you're going to be the one like winning the business in another state? In the next in the next one three year, I'll be I'll be definitely polished to go by myself and run the state by myself. Okay. 
any idea on which state you want to go to and like what business you're going to start winning, like, you know, broker work, private pay, like, how do you, do you have any sort of like practical sort of plan? About it? I haven't looked into like, as far as like the, the, the stats around different states and where it's like most needed or um, high demand at. Uh, I know one was a uh, New York that my mom said, uh, but uh, I don't know. Not not a small state, but like some I don't know, like uh, uh Houston, Atlanta. I've been even I know what we're still in California, but as far as closest to home, I would do LA. LA okay. is one. Um, what's the name? But uh, down south, preferably. <laughs> Warmer weather. Mm-hmm. Down south. <laughs> I feel you. So interesting. So you would want to like spearhead a new division of of the NEMT business yourself still under the B811 medical transportation brand um just totally new location new contracts new setup um obviously that can work hand in hand with the other business that you're starting to do with vehicles like buying and selling and renting out vehicles right exactly yeah and then that's when I then yes with the next one three years of course I or hope that that business expands and I can do business in different, of course, any state I want to doing that business also. So a lot of things that I'm interested in is just stuff that, well, my mom showed me with the B811 is businesses that's really not gonna go away. Like like my after I master the DJ auto sales, I wanna get into dispatch with the trucks. Cause of course I don't want to drive anymore, but I can work with B eight eleven and do my car thing and do dispatch because it's from home. <laughs> so that so I just like looking in the business that I know it's, that's not like going anywhere. Medical transportation um, can't go anywhere. Uh, everybody need uh, the elderly always going to need help and transportation to their um, to their um, uh, uh, their appointments cars never going to go anywhere uh transportation as far as stuff uh, like the box trucks and stuff so that's really what i've been into and just trying to slowly master each thing instead of just diving in the heck of different things at once because that's what i used to do and it would like kind of have me everywhere and my mom just been trying to teach me how to just try to master one thing and then master the next one instead of trying to dive in the heck of different things at one time yeah i like this so I mean, working with your mom at B811, you're basically like learning the playbook about how to start and grow an NEMT business. Mm. And you've been doing this, mastering it. Now it's like the adjacent thing where you're learning how to buy vehicles, rent them out, you know, sell them. And you mentioned just now, like you're interested in getting into dispatching of trucks. So mm -hmm. that's like another area. Can you tell me about that? Like what, what got your interest in, in truck dispatching? Um, like I said, just looking in the different, um, different things that's like longevity as far as diving to, as far as careers, because me personally, I don't like, I was, I play sports. So of course you in high, you're in middle school, high school, you want to go to college and go to professionals work. <laughs> that's, that's your ultimate dream goal when you're playing sports in middle school and high school. So I just want to be an entrepreneur because I don't, know specifically what i like so i've just been just trying to dive into different things and read into different things and see if it catches me because i just know i just want to be an entrepreneur i want to work for myself run, run my own business so that's my my main goal and how i and the dispatch thing um my friend in Atlanta, he does, and I just always hear about it periodically. You know, everybody does it and talks about it on YouTube, and everybody tries to get you to buy all these classes and all that. So I just just looking at it on being on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I don't ever buy into those classes or anything because all you have to do is <laughs> do your own research. It's just you being lazy and not doing your research. So um, just doing my research on it and. I said it's something from home and it wouldn't slow up anything as far as B811 or any other business that I ran. <clears throat> so that's kind of why I caught my answer to something from home. You getting instead of just driving, you get a small percentage by just middleman in the deal being a dispatcher. Yeah. And like 
honestly, Jared, it seems like you've gotten the best training that anyone can get <laughs> in starting and running an NEMT business. Like if there's someone who can go and just start a new NEMT division in another state, like it's you. Um, yeah, I definitely. You've really gone from zero to one to five with <laughs> eight, 11 in the span of just less than two years. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I was at the the work definitely pays off from starting off, like I said, driving and being the only driver and running running around with my head cut off in, in the beginning and just um trying to figure it out as we go and um just seeing things uh play out more smoothly and like I said, me driving less and just looking back like dang, I used to get up at four o'clock in the morning and sometimes my days wouldn't end till nine o'clock. So it's just it's good seeing it it pay off and so yeah it's been coming out good. So Jared, a lot of the people watching the Bambi podcast um, are early in their journey of starting an NEMT business and growing an NEMT business. You having been through you know over the past two years from inception to you know growing it with your family. I mean, what would you say are some of the hardest parts of getting from zero to one to five vehicles, um, like things that new NEMT business owners or people who are early on would benefit from hearing, like some of the biggest lessons and like how to go, you know, in those initial first one to two years. Um, I would just say you just have to do it. If you if you want to do it, you just you literally just have to dive into it and do it. Um, when we started off. Like we, like I said, we didn't know any. It wasn't like we had a um, um, an NMT expert or like we went uh, was on uh, talking to anyone. My mom just dove in and just went at it. Like I said, her motiv motivation was uh, behind her brother, and then of course you get to seeing the the uh, the stats behind it and the high demand. I'm like, oh, this is a a good business. So of course you want to dive into it and learn more. Um, when we started off, we didn't we got we start off with one wheelchair van and then we got two regular vans. So in the beginning, that was a huge mistake from what we know now because a lot of our clients are wheelchair. And then with wheelchair, you can still wheelchair vans, you can still put the ambulatory clients in there. So that was like I said, you're gonna come into those bumps and stuff, but I was my advice is just like if you're interested in it, just dive into it. Look, research up um what you need to research. Um and then just just take a dive at it. You, just, you can't. Like, what do you got to be prepared for? The major thing is, I would say that like vehicle maintenance is like the the main thing. How much you're gonna be changing tires and like just keep like when you're running it, really keeping up with all that is probably I would say one of our hardest things. Just keeping up with all the vehicles, uh, make sure they're gassed up every night. Um, uh, one thing I can say about the business, as far as um, like dealing with your clients and the elderly, that that's uh, that I didn't expect, or I mean, yeah, that I didn't expect coming into the company was uh, like when you get close relationship with the clients, and like we didn't in the past two years, we probably had like two or three clients pass away, and just having like some of them, like I was really cool with and talk like cool with their family and so like one of I went to one of our clients funeral actually or to his repast uh they had asked me to come that was one thing I didn't expect like having a like actually getting a relationship with them and then like that happening and, and then um I don't know that that definitely that threw me off the most that's one thing that I I can say as far as we when to get building relationships with the clients and um and some tragic happens to them I want to say that that definitely threw me off the most as far as working. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I did an interview with someone else who who really focused, um, you know, this is like a few months ago, and it's one of our podcast episodes about how like you're dealing with people who have difficulties in their lives. That's who you're transporting. So it can really take an emotional toll. Um, mm -hmm. um, with their kind of attitude, um, seems like you you weather it really well but um yeah i mean i guess that's one thing people need to know is you're gonna have to deal with tragic things mm -hmm. that you transport on a daily or weekly basis 
Yeah, and of course, like I'm sure, like the the bigger, like we've been growing. So of course, me and my mom been in the field. The bigger companies, as far as like that's been around, those bosses, of course, don't aren't dealing with those clients hand to hand. But as far as far since we're up and coming, and it's just been me and my mom running it. You know, us being running the business, being the bosses, we actually really been dealing with them one on one and seeing that. So yeah, it definitely was kind of threw me off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting. I can give you a funny story. Uh, well, not a funny story. Just uh, sometimes if I'm a uh, if I'm a uh, if, if we're a busy day or I'm kind of behind or something, I um, I uh, if I know like if I know my client, I know like if I've been a couple like some client, they want to be picked up soon as they're soon as they're done. Or some clients, they're not really. Oh, it's okay. I'm, I'll chill outside and, and watch the sun or something like that. Um. If I know a client's gonna be upset, I'll bribe them and, and stop and get them some food or something on the way home. Or <laughs> so, I'll do something, something's a little small gesture, like you want to stop and get some food on the way or something. Or I go through a drive-through close by their house on the way. As long as it's in route on the way, I do little, I, I do little stuff like that. And we do stuff like um, for our clients, but as, as we're getting bigger, of course, so it's kind of been harder keeping up with it as the company grows. But what we try to do is a. Uh, like keep up with all our clients' birthdays and like try to do something like uh give them like a free ride on a Sunday so wherever they want to go. Like we didn't took um a client to the movie. She wants to go to the movies for her birthday. So I said these are people that they're only getting transported when we transport them. They haven't done anything all week or or nothing. They probably only went to dialysis all week. So uh, little small gestures like that definitely make you stand out. As far as I don't know if other companies do stuff like that, but that was just something like me and my mom had came up with as you grow these relationships with them and talking to them. And oh, I like to go to the movies a lot. I tell my mom or talking sports with them. Like, I, I want to try to take uh, Fred to a baseball game or something one time when he's free or something like just small stuff, little gestures like that, that we try to think of just because we know like they're older. They don't do any. They don't really do anything. I go to their appointment, so just um, keeping that in mind. Trying to not just have it be about work and business. Like have some type of sympathy and heart towards these these people we're transporting. I love the personal touch that you guys put into this business. You know, there's a lot of NEMT businesses out there. They just treat it as a business, and that's <laughs> that but you guys demonstrate that you really care about what you do and that's what keeps you going to mm. grow the business and do this day in and out and grow the business and you know at the end of the day i mean that's what probably helps you grow the business like yeah. you guys develop this reputation of doing so well by the clients that you transport that more people want b811 medical transport uh, more facilities and I mean, Jared, can you maybe share some like personal experiences that you've had in terms of growing the business where you've gotten new contracts with facilities or whoever, new clients based on the referrals? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I'll see like we're local. So, of course, I run into people I go to school with. Um, it was someone that worked at, um, uh, what do they call those? Like the, um, the senior citizens homes, they have them like set up like big apartments now and they have people in there helping and working or whatever. A uh, girl I went to school with happened to be working there and I dropped off some flyers and and um, <clears throat> and our information and they end up calling us and we end up, I think we still transport some people from there to this day. So definitely word to mouth and just being out and us being from here and seeing people work at different business that definitely plays a part. I try to keep little brochures on me all the time. Um, even when people just randomly see me taking the client out the car or something, if I'm at the hospital and they're, they've they been sitting outside, they'll ask me, hey, you guys, um, can I get your card or your brochure or something, how to contact you guys? So um, marketing definitely has, has been huge for us and big as far as just being out or somebody seeing our van or just us knowing people. That's before even going online and looking for contracts just actually being outside and having a, the coffee shop is a place of course we have brochures and stuff in there so um yeah that's definitely been pretty good for us yeah yeah 
that our main thing, like, of course, we can have that relationship with our clients, ourselves. But the main thing is, of course, is installing that into who we hire. So I would say that's the main thing as far as the outside of everything, as far as separating yourself or um, or um, keeping your business going is not even a relationship, just having that respect for it, for your clients and um, making them feel comfortable with you. I won't say that's the main thing. I said we try to install the same the same uh, way we um, we take our take our clients or talk to our clients. We try to tell our employees like that's one of the main things we tell them when we hire them. Like we like to, we know our clients by name, and we don't want to go in there looking on our phone and hey, do you know where? Look like you want to know know your client. <clears throat> so I would say that's the main thing as far as the transportation is just is um. What do they call it? Uh, I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> but I would say that's the main thing is just um, being there for your clients and having that uh, those relationships with them and knowing they can they can call call you for help or or anything as far as if it's setting up scheduling or anything. Like I said, they have to they go through a couple of different like we have go go grandparents and uh, MTM, so they have to go through them and then it comes to us. So sometimes that's a little difficult for for the elder people. So we can we give them that um that option. You can just call us personally, and then we'll help you set it up to make it easier. So I'll say just that having that communication and relationship with your clients is definitely key in the transportation business. I love it. I love it. Run, Bambi, run! I love Bambi. My favorite. My favorite app. <laughs> 